Welcome to the Moravian Archives. Normally in August we invite our friends for a soiree uh, as a way for us to thank you for your continued support. This year, because of the whole situation, that won't be possible. So instead, we decided to make this little video so you can see what we are up to and uh, what we have been doing in the past uh, couple of weeks. We are preparing for you to come back to the archives and we hope that soon uh, you will be able to join us again here uh, on 41 West Locust Street. Hello, my name is Tom Bras, and on behalf of the Board of Directors, I welcome you to this year's soiree, our annual celebration of the interest and support coming from you, the Friends of the Archives. Under ordinary circumstances, we would be meeting face to face in the gallery or in the reading room of the Archives building. Time to socialize and have friendly conversation. We are hoping that will be possible by this time next year. In the meantime, we would like to offer some updates of how this year has been going. And we especially want to thank all of you for your financial contributions this year, many of which have been received already. In addition to the daily operations and programs which the Archives offers, there are sometimes unexpected expenses, such as the recent tree removal and sidewalk repair, and the replacement of our HVA system in the vault. Your generosity helps fund those special circumstances, and we are indeed very grateful for your support. Thank you. So back in September, we heard that there was a portrait of Christian Renatus in Zendorf's son for auction uh, in Berlin and the Moravian Archives bid on it and we got it and we were very excited to receive this small portrait of Christian Renatus and we had it restored by a conservator in Philadelphia and this is the first time that it's going to be on display in our exhibit and what we discovered when we received it that there were great similarities to a painting of Christian Renatus that we already had in our collection and that is this painting, a portrait that came down in the Zinzendorf family, his descendants that moved to America brought this painting with them. And when we compare these two paintings, we can see that, first of all, the pose of the sitter is very similar, but then also the background, there is a vase in both images and a green um, curtain can be seen in the background. The way the hair is done is very similar. So we think uh, that the small painting is really a copy of this larger portrait. And uh, I just think it's fascinating that uh, these two paintings are now reunited here on the other side of the Atlantic. So we hope you can come uh, to the archive soon and see these paintings in, in, uh, in our exhibit. Hi friends of the Moravian Archives, it's Kelly. The annual soiree is my favorite event to host here at the Archives. Not just because of the signature cocktail, but because I love to see all of our friends, volunteers, and researchers together celebrating the Archives and the tremendous work and dedication that you have provided us. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see each other this August, but I'm excited to show you what I've been working on and what I will continue to work on at the Archives. My newest project is placing our original items from the Moravian History Store online. Inspired by the Archives Collection, featuring some of the most unique pieces housed in our vault. Power of the Gospel, along with many Archives treasures, have been reproduced into keychains, necklaces, postcards, and prints. I'm so excited to continue to expand the Moravian History Store to support our mission with 100% of the proceeds going back into our collection. I look forward to seeing all of you in the near future. Hi, I'm Thomas McCullough, Assistant Archivist here at the Moravian Archives. And while I have your attention, I'd like to tell you and the rest of our supporters a little bit about some of the measures that we've taken this year to enhance preservation at the Moravian Archives. So if you can, follow me into Vault 1 and I'll tell you a little bit more. So I'm sure you can feel the cold when you come in here. Well, I guess not virtually. Uh, but this year we were able to install a completely new uh, air conditioning and heating and ventilation unit. Uh, the nice thing about this is that our old HVAC unit was 15 years old and it's so important that we are keeping our records in here at 65 degrees uh, with the relative humidity being 50%. Um, if you follow me into the second vault, I'll show you another thing that we worked on this year. 
If you're familiar with light, light can be really damaging to records, um, particularly books and manuscripts. Um, any high energy light, like ultraviolet light, is really damaging. So these bright lights that you see up here are LED lights that were installed. So we're really happy that we were able to install both of these things uh, in 2019 and 2020, really in an effort to enhance our preservation at the archives. So without further ado, I won't keep you in the cold, but thanks for checking this out. Our next step, we hope, is to do the lighting in Vault 1. Hi everyone, Caitlin here. Unfortunately, our newest exhibit won't be opening for this year's summer soiree, but we've been hard at work curating our newest exhibit, Zinzendorf in America, to open later this year. The exhibit will feature a newly acquired item, such as a portrait of Zinzendorf's son, Christian Renatus. It will also feature many things from the vault that haven't been on display in quite a while. The exhibit will highlight Zinzendorf's time while in America and the Zinzendorf family. Thank you for your continued support of all the archives endeavors. I look forward to welcoming you all back to the archives and share with you what we've been able to do with your help this past year. Hello, my name is Jonathan Ennis and I am the digital archivist here. I was hired part-time in 2018 and this January I began working full-time. An exciting change that was made possible by the archive receiving a grant from the Council on Library and Information Resources, or CLEAR for short. This grant is for a two-year-long project entitled Uncommon Bonds, Labrador Inuit and Moravian Missionaries, and as part of it I will be scanning and processing more than 56,000 pages of records from the Moravian Church's mission stations in Labrador from between the years 1764 and 1944. These documents provide a wealth of information on the lives and work of the Inuit and Moravians in the region, and I am looking forward to seeing this project through to completion. Hi, I'm Gwen Michael, the Assistant Director of the Moravian Music Foundation. I'm the Bethlehem arm of the Moravian Music Foundation and in charge of two-thirds of our collection, which is up here in Bethlehem. I am so excited to be responsible for that. So during the couple months that we haven't been able to be in the building, it's kind of been a blessing for me and for the Music Foundation because I've had some time to finally get some proofreading done. And in terms of, of proofreading, what we do is we start with the original manuscript. Here you can see one of the um, uh, 200 plus uh, year old manuscript from Johann Friedrich Peda. And um, someone, not I, <laughs> someone has transcribed that into modern notation. And then I get it and I do my magic red pen, green pen thing, and uh, finally we come out with a finished product. Um, this piece is actually right now at the printer, it's probably already in print, and as soon as we can transport items from Ohio to Bethlehem, I will have them. We have three different, um, three different uh, choral publications that we do. Uh, this piece will be in the blue series, which is new edition of items from our collection, of items from the vault. We also have a green series, which is um, arrangements of, of things in the blue series. These are arranged for smaller choirs, sometimes SAB, two-part mixed, in lower keys. It's a relatively new series. And then we also have a red series, and this is music by living Moravian composers. So. Not all Moravian composers only lived in the 18th century. We still have 20th and 21st century composers. Um, so here's what I've been working on. If you can see in the background, it's just a lot of paper and a lot of red ink. Um, maybe I'll see if we can give you an, an idea of what one of these pieces sound like. So this is Come Thank Our Great Savior, a new edition of, of a piece by Johann Friedrich Peter edited by Elizabeth Ridgway, who was a Rollins College student. Mm -hmm. 